All right, I'm just finishing up a major service on this 2012 Honda Accord and um, I'm going to do a service on the cooling system. I'm just going to do a simple drain and fill with the coolant and uh, figure I'd bring you guys along, show you how it's done. Um, somebody mentioned in the comments they want to see how it was done and so I figured, eh, I'll film it. I wasn't planning on it, but seeing as somebody wanted to, I figured, man, maybe there's somebody else wants to also. So come along, check it out. I'll show you how I do it. For this job, pretty easy. We're just using a drain pan and a couple gallons of uh, Honda coolant. That's the Type 2 50-50 pre-mixed and it's uh, silicate and borate free. So uh, I highly recommend just go and buy the Honda coolant. Most of these manufacturers nowadays use their own coolant and Honda's no different. And um, if you use the wrong stuff, I mean, I don't know, you could damage your engine. Um, you can never go wrong just using the factory stuff. And, you know, I get this stuff for $18.95 at the local Honda dealer. Um, and I've noticed that the uh, other stuff, it's not much cheaper. You're not saving a lot of money. So in my opinion, it's not worth taking a chance on damaging your cooling system or engine or the seals or water pump and stuff like that. So I just use what the factory recommends for any vehicle I work on. And in this case, we're going with the Honda stuff. I should mention this vehicle has been sitting. It's nice and cool. Nice and cool to the touch. As you can see, there's your radiator cap. And you can see I'm moving the radiator. This is your radiator right here. So that's what we're going to be pretty much draining and filling. Um, don't open these when it's hot. It's got it in several different languages. All the warnings on there, what will happen. When you turn this and expose that to cold air, it's going to come spurting out at you. And it's going to, it's going to burn you, basically. That's the short end of the story. You'll only do that once, believe me. After that happens, you'll never do that again. So just wait till the vehicle's cool if you're ever going to work on your own cooling system. And from the front of the vehicle, we'll look right over the radiator cap here. And we'll look down. And let's see if I can get a shot at it. That white thing right in the middle. Right there. That is your drain for your radiator. We're just going to crack that open. Usually you can use your hand and just crack it right open. And uh, we'll drain the radiator straight from that. And before we crack it open, we'll just put our drain pan right under there. We'll just make sure you can see. And we'll move it over just a little bit. There we go. Now it's right in the middle of that. Now all our coolant will go right into our pan. Alright, I'm just going to reach down here. You can usually just snake your hand right through and crack it loose. Just a couple of turns. You can start here and it come out. And then what you can do, loosen the cap. You can hear it'll come out more. Now we're letting the air in. We'll just go ahead and let that drain. Uh, usually you can just do it by hand. Every once in a while you'll come across ones that are really tight and you can reach under there with a pair of pliers and just gently crack it loose. It's just righty tighty lefty loosey like normal. Um, whatever you do, do not tighten it back up with pliers. Just use your fingers. That's what the uh, drain plug looks like if you're curious. Um, I don't recommend taking it all the way out like this because your coolant is going to flow everywhere. Um, if you wait till it's just barely at a trickle, you could take it out like I did. But if you try to take it out while it's uh, going full blast, you're going to make a mess. All right, now this thing's empty. We'll go ahead and get this reinstalled, tighten back up. Alright, just get it tightened up by hand. Alright, we'll pull the pull our drain pan out while we're thinking of it and get this out of the way. Alright, now that we have all the old coolant out of there, or most of it, um, now we need to get new coolant in there. 
usually on these Hondas you get anywhere from one to one and a half gallons out depending on what kind of vehicle it is. Um, these Accords, this is a 2012 I mentioned, now, that should be about a gallon and a half. So in the whole system on most of these Accords, I think 08 to 2012, although they vary between year to year, most of them hold roughly two gallons of coolant total. So if you get a gallon and a half out, you got about three quarters of all your coolant out, which is pretty good. Um, but obviously now there's air in the system. And if, if you fill it up, you're going to have air trapped in there and uh, we need to get it out. So there's a couple different ways we can do it. You can see here, we got this contraption which uses vacuum um, to help uh, get all the air out. Um, you can use this uh, spill-free funnel. This one's from Lyle, model 24680. Comes with, uh, comes with a bunch of attachments. And um, in, in this case, this is the one for the Honda. Um, or you can go with the way Honda says it and just use the cap. Um, I'm going to use the Lyle spill-free funnel. That's what I like to use on these Hondas, get all the air out. So let's get it done. This tool I showed you right here is part of this kit from Astro 78585. And uh, basically just uses compressed air to force the coolant under a, under a vacuum into the system. Now, if you want to fill this up and bleed it the way Honda says to do it, you would just pour your coolant in there till it comes all the way up to the top, and then you just take your cap and just set it on there, just like that, and then we're, we would run it for two cooling cycles. So the cooling fans need to come on twice, and, um, and then that will burp most of your air out. Now, it's going to make a mess. The coolant, when it burps, it's going to drool all down the side there. And so we want to, you know, you're going to have to clean up. And so that's why I don't do this method, but you can do it. This is exactly the way Honda tells you to do it. Um, but we'll use the spill-free funnel. But first, what we'll do is we'll take this uh, coolant reservoir out. Just unscrew the cap. And then we'll just pop the bottle out. It just pulls straight up off of this. And we'll dump this old coolant out with our other stuff. That way we'll put new coolant in here too. All right, with the uh, coolant bottle empty, we'll put it back in place. Just pops in there. And we'll leave that loose right there. Put that on just like the normal cap. And then we'll take our funnel and it just attaches just like that. And we got our little plug to plug it off whenever we lift it up. That way we won't spill whatever remaining coolant all over the floor. Alright, we'll take our first jug of Honda coolant. We'll just start pouring it in. There's the first gallon. Now we're starting the second gallon. And there we go. You can see it stopped going down. All right, with the spill funnel in place, and with coolant in there, I'm going to go get in the car, fire it up, and turn the heat on. So that way uh, the coolant flows through there also.
All right, it's all the way on hot. We'll make sure to keep it there. And then now we're gonna keep an eye on our uh, temperature gauge there and make sure that it doesn't go to hot. Every once in a while when you're doing these, that thing will go all the way to hot. If you see that happen, shut it off immediately. Let the thing cool down for 20 or 30 minutes and then restart the process. Fire the car back up. Make sure you have coolant in your, uh, in your uh, overflow bottle and everything, or I should say in your spill-free funnel or however you're using it. And uh, what happened was there was just a pocket of air um, that got caught in there and made it overheat real quick. And so you just have to shut it down and start it over. I've seen that happen before. I've had it happen to me. So no biggie, but I just want to make you aware in case you do see it. And as the car warms up and, and starts circulating the coolant, we should start seeing bubbles come out here. Or if you're using the cap me method, you'll just see it kind of bubbling up and spilling over. And then it's not uncommon as the coolant heats and it'll rise and fall. You'll see it move up and down. And usually what I'll do to help it along, usually rev it up to about 1,500 to 2,000 right in there. Help it warm up a little bit better. Get those uh, cooling fans to come on quicker. All right, what I'm looking for is that engine temperature to get up to normal operating temperature, which it looks like it's pretty much right there. And then I want to hear those cooling fans come on at least twice. And if they come on more than that, like three times, that's fine. But I want to hear them come on and off at least twice. You can see it's getting all the air out. And it might not look it, but this can definitely pop up and get you in the eyeball. Wear safety glasses when you're going to do this. Alright, now that the cooling fans have come on and off a couple times and uh, I'm not seeing any more bubbles, then we can go ahead and shut her down. Right. Now what I'm going to do is usually I'll take a rag because this hose is hot. I'll squeeze this just a little bit and I'll put my dipstick in it. Just like that. That usually will prevent it from spilling too much right there. It raises the level just enough. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it in my overflow reservoir. You can see we didn't spill any. Just be careful, this will be hot. That's why I'm using a rag. Put the cap back on. And we just need just a little bit more in our reservoir there. I usually top this uh, reservoir off to the max level after I do a drain and fill because even though we bled it, there's usually a little bit of air still trapped in there that doesn't come out until you drive it and then it'll come out into the reservoir here and the reservoir will go down a little bit. So for the next week or two, it's a good idea keep an eye on the reservoir level, make sure it's not going down too far. And I always dispose of my coolant properly and I recommend you do the same. Don't dump it down a storm drain or dump it outside. And I ended up using a, just over one and a half gallons, probably about 1.6 gallons on this job.
and Hondas are finicky when it comes to air inside the cooling systems and I can't recommend this uh, Lyle spill free funnel enough that thing works great getting uh, air out of these Hondas alright now that I'm all done I like to take a second look over my work make sure I didn't miss anything um, I'll look under the vehicle make sure I don't see any leaks or anything like that um, as far as interval uh, Honda has their maintenance minder program which is supposed to uh, you know give you a code on the dash and then you take it to your Honda dealer and they tell you what it needs um, me personally I like to do the coolant the very first time at uh, 60,000 miles which is how many miles this vehicle has um, and then after that I like to do one drain and fill every 30,000 miles that way it keeps the fluid fresh because we're not getting a hundred percent out we're only getting about three quarters um, but that's just me that's what I like to do in any event hey if this video helped you out or you, or you liked it make sure to give it a thumbs up thanks for watching